Welcome all back to another episode of Anime of the Week. In my very biased opinion, the best series on the channel. Today we're going to look at a very strange animal, the ping pong tree sponge. Chondrocladia is a genus in the family Clazorhizidae. This family is a family of carnivorous sponges, so that probably gives you a little hint of what they like to eat. They are part of the demo sponge class of sponges that includes around 76% of all sponge species. The ping pong tree sponge only refers to a single species within the genus, Chondrocladia lampadoglobus, with other members of the genus having their own interesting names like the harp sponge. For this video, I'm going to talk about the entire genus, not just the ping pong tree sponge, as they all have very similar behaviour and adaptations. Now just to clear something up in case some out there don't know, sponges are indeed animals and belong to the kingdom Animalia. There are a number of reasons why they are animals, but here are the big main ones. Firstly, they are multicellular. However, so are plants and fungi, for example. However, sponges do not possess cell walls, unlike plants and fungi. They are also heterotrophic, meaning they have to catch their food and can't produce it themselves. And finally, they produce sperm cells instead of pollen. There are a lot of other reasons, as other non-animals also also have to catch their food, and some plants even produce sperm. But just for the sake of this video, these are the ones you need to know, and it's the culmination of all these reasons that puts them in the animal kingdom, not each on its own. These sponges come in all shapes and sizes, and can look like anything from this Lampadoglobus to this species called Lyra. However, you may notice that they both have the telltale ping pong shaped ends to their stolons. There are 33 described species of Chondrocladia, with two others yet to be described, for a grand total of 35 separate species. As there are so many of them, they live all around the world. The species Lyra was found off the coast of California at around 3,000 to 3,500 metres down. Between 2000 in 2002 and 2005, a new species were found in Antarctica by the Antarctic Benthic Deep Sea Biodiversity Project. This project was done aboard the German research ship RV Polar Stern, which interestingly was one of the polar research ships my mother worked on as a marine biologist in 1989. She now has her own YouTube channel with a lot of similar content to Anne of the Week, so if you want to go check that out, I'll link it. They have also been found off Easter Island and Chile, as well as many other parts of the Pacific and wider world. As you can probably tell, they are benthic dwellers, meaning they live on the ocean floor, and so depending on the depth of the ocean, they can live many thousands of metres down. As previously said, Chondrocladia are carnivores, and the way they eat their prey is truly fascinating. The ping pong shaped ends to their stolons are used in the hunting process. The surface of the balloons and the stolons leading up to them are covered in tiny hard structures called spicules. These are usually made of calcium carbonate or silica, the same substances that make up the sponge's skeleton. These tiny spicules act like tiny velcro hooks and so any crustacean that touches them gets stuck on the surface as the tiny spicules hook themselves to the prey. Small crustaceans are the preferred prey item. So once they have the prey, how on earth do they digest? It if they don't have mouths or any internal organs. Normally sponges are filter feeders straining out tiny bits of phyto and zooplankton through the many holes in their bodies. But what chondrocladia and many other carnivorous sponges do is grow a thin membrane around the captured prey. This membrane is made up of many cells that act almost like an amoeba. Phagocytosis is used to take tiny microscopic chunks out of the now doomed crustacean and absorb them into the cells, and that might be one of the coolest methods of eating I've ever heard of. The ping pong balls are not just used for capturing prey, they are also vital to the reproductive cycle of the sponges. The ball contains in them sperm packets. These sperm packets are then released into the water currents around them. These sperm packets will then hopefully get caught on the surface of another chondrocladia of the same species. The sperm will permeate through the surface of the sponge and hopefully get to the eggs to then fertilise them. If the eggs are properly fertilised, the area around the sperm packet will swell up forming bulges on the sponge's stolons. When sufficiently developed, these bulges will then release the new individual sponges into the water to be carried by the currents to then hopefully root themselves into the seabed and continue to grow. I think I have already covered most of their amazing adaptations in the previous sections, but each and every one of them shows just how well adapted they are to their environment. They manage to live, eat and breed successfully without ever moving or directly touching another member of their species, which is truly amazing. Honestly, we have no clue if these are under threat, or if anything tries to prey on them. We simply don't know enough about them, and they live in such remote and desolate areas of the ocean, it's impossible to get any sort of reading on their population size. 
Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.